hey, uh, you might be charging your AGM battery incorrectly, and I'm here to help you out, tell you how to do it correctly. You guys, if you know exactly why you clicked on this video, then go to this timestamp, we'll get right into it. I'm gonna talk a little bit about dual batteries and why you want to charge your AGM correctly, okay? So, um, of course, we want you guys to, to go out. The high level thing about Overland Bound is, want your kids to get out there and touch some grass. Have an adventure, get off the beaten path, off grid. You guys, you need it in your life to give you balance and perspective. So that's what we're all about. Well, if you're gonna go and do those things, you don't wanna run the vehicle you depend on um, uh, off of your starting battery because you could get out there and get stuck, right? So you, you probably wanna have a dual battery system. One is your starting battery and one is uh, what's called your house battery. And that's what you run all your accessories on. So we did a video a little while ago and it was how you can set up a dual battery system for about 70 bucks, all the wiring and the hardware and the stuff that you need. So pretty inexpensively, uh, you don't need to go out there and spend a lot of money. Um, I'll link that video so you guys can check it out. But here's the thing, uh, it's best if you go a step further. I've made a mistake um, by not charging my AGM battery correctly and what happens is you replace it sooner because you don't get the life out of your battery. Um, some things that happen when you don't charge your AGM correctly. You're out there off grid and you don't get the amp hours that you want. You can't be out there as long because you're not charging it correctly. It doesn't have the power and it greatly reduces your battery life. And that means you got to go out and spend a lot of money again to replace those batteries. And let me tell you, let's talk turkey, brass tacks as it were. I just spent $800 on two North Star AGM batteries. They're expensive, they're expensive batteries. I want them to last as long as possible. Your standard car battery, lead acid car battery, likes about 13.5 to 13.8 volts to charge it when you're driving down the road. That's a standard battery. If you upgrade to an AGM battery, AGM batteries like 14.5 to 14.8 volts to fully charge them. Now, if you go out and you buy an expensive battery, do your own research and figure out exactly what charging voltage you need, but you're probably gonna find it's within that range. So if you do nothing, you're gonna charge your AGM battery at 13.5 volts, it's never gonna get a full charge, you're not gonna have the amp hours and it's gonna kill your battery faster. That's what happens. So how do you get 14.5 volts to charge your new North Star AGM? Well, if you have an older vehicle like mine, the, the Land Cruiser 1996 Land Cruiser 80 series or something in that era or before, and, and hey, you should, it's good for the environment, recycle some of these old rigs. Um, they're also analog and don't have all the solid state stuff that's gonna leave you stranded when it fries. So uh, there's a simple trick. I'm gonna take you out to the Land Cruiser right now and we're gonna see exactly what to do. It'll cost you about $24 at most. All right, so let's take a look. All right, you guys. Beauty of these babies is not just skin deep. <laughs> look, it might not look like much, but there's a couple of really good AGM batteries. Um, just a quick overview. Starting battery, this is my house battery. All the accessories run off the house battery. Uh, if I click this breaker here, boom, back to factory wiring. All of my, everything's disconnected and I can, I can, uh, break the accessory circuits that easily to isolate my vehicle electronic system. Um, and this is a simple solenoid over here. When the ignition is turned on, it connects these batteries so that the generator charges both batteries because the solenoid is closed and the electrical system is connected. As soon as the battery gets turned off, it's disconnected isolating the starting battery from all the accessories that are running. That's just how it works. Now let's talk about charging. Before we make our changes, let's uh, start the car. We're on DC. We're gonna see how much 
charging power we have to the starting battery, all right? Forgot the keys. Okay, now, <clears throat> in your vehicle, there's going to be a fuse, and it is called charge, or something similar, and you'll probably find something like a 7.5 amp fuse in the charge block, and in the, in the charge space, and you're going to replace it with this, and this is a 1 amp diode. You're going to take this and replace the fuse with the one amp diode. Now, with diodes, the flow of current goes in the direction of the arrow. So find out what side is the, the load uh, and what side is the line. The line comes from the alternator and the load would go to your battery. And so you want the arrow pointing uh, away from the alternator and toward your battery in your fuse block. So you'll need to figure out on your specific vehicle which, which direction that is. If I tell you point the arrow towards the driver, that doesn't do you any good because I don't know what kind of vehicle you have. So you have to figure that out. But once you replace this, take out the 7.5 amp fuse and you put in the diode, the one amp diode. It's as easy as that. Now we're going to put our voltmeter back on the battery and see what kind of voltage we have going to the battery now. I hope that was helpful. You guys, uh, the Overland Bound community has our free app uh, that you can download. It's Overland Bound 1 on iOS and Android. And the reason I'm mentioning that today is because there is a wealth of knowledge in the community. That app has a number of things. Community, first and foremost. So go ask questions about batteries, about vehicles. Are you thinking about getting a rig? You know, what are the top 10 things you need to bring on your first overland trip? Go and connect with the community. Uh, it also has a resource map with lots and lots of campsites and trails near you. You can plan trips and events in the app, uh, connect with local meetups, and then it has, dang tootin, it's got uh, off-grid mapping and navigation. So it's really a robust piece of software. You can get it for free. Of course, if you wanna access the offline maps and being able to record tracks and share tracks with friends and unlock the full adventure potential, then yes, there is a, a, a membership that we have, but without that, super valuable. You can access all the resources on the map and find out where to go. Hopefully you can get out there this weekend. All right. Okay, you guys, I'll be back soon. We will do a Red Arc Manager 30 install. So we'll be continuing along the um, Overland Electronics uh, 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 thread, whatever you want to call it. Um, we'll be continuing along with some more electronics for Overland vehicles so that you guys can set up your own rig. All right, till next time. Hey, I hope you're planning an adventure and I will see you on the trail.